What up, nerds? It's Jason here from Custom Cans, and the time has finally come to complete the Hi-Fi Man. <laughs> to complete the Hi-Fi Man HE 400 SE series, which I've been running. Uh, we're gonna basically, if you haven't been following along, we're taking some pretty decent planar headphones, the HE 400 SE, which are very reasonably priced, fixing a few of the things that I didn't like about them, and generally sexying up the design to create the HE 400SE XY edition, as named by someone in the comments. Uh, it's a nice touch, nice touch. <laughs> Whoever that was, nice touch. So, bit of backstory, I bought, I got an email saying they were selling these for 150 and I'm like, oh, I've not really tried some planners, got them. They're definitely some magic, they sounded pretty good, but they were lacking a little of, bit of weight in the low end, and uh, yeah, there was, there was a few little things about the sound that just felt a, not as full bodied as I would like. So I set about modifying them and it all got a bit out of hand. There's a there's a playlist with a whole series. A lot of mistakes were made. Um, <laughs> it's been about six months. But finally, I've finished the project and I've released all the files. So it's all open source. You can download them, print it yourself. But uh, yeah, I'm really pleased with the kind of look of these. I think they look pretty nice. They sound better. And I've reused near, like uh, it's, Pretty much just 3D printed parts you'll need unless you want to make a, a cable. All the rest of the parts can be scavenged from the old ones. We've modified the headband to make it a bit more comfortable and look a bit nicer. So anyway, enough preamble. Let's see how it's made. Let's get down to business. So, <laughs> um, so dismantling these is pretty straightforward. There's a, there's a screw either side, flathead screwdriver, find a, a, something that will fit in there. Unscrew those, your ear cup will come away. Removing the pad, again, pretty straightforward. You just pull it and it'll unhook. There we go. And then inside there'll be the driver. So at this point, once you've got the driver exposed, be careful. This is what the original ear cup looks like. Essentially inside you'll have six screws which are holding the driver into this. You wanna unscrew all of those six screws. So yeah, essentially, there's going to be a, inside there's going to be a sandwich built up with uh, the driver and then a metal plate on top that holds it all in place and then screwed in. So you just remove the six screws, remove the metal plate, and then carefully tap a tap a tap a the driver. And what will happen then is you will have the socket dangling on a wire from the socket on the bottom there. Uh, now then, this socket is going to be glued in place. It's going to glue either side, and it'll probably have glue around the little... Uh, retaining nut there. What you want to try and do is scrape that out with a scalpel or something like that. Just remove as much of the glue as possible and then get your pliers around the socket, give it a bit of a wiggle and you should break the glue and then you can kind of work it out. You can either unscrew it from this side or unscrew it from that side. If you're certainly never going back to these, I would say it's easier to just use some small pliers and just break away all the plastic from the inside here to reveal the socket because some of these are glued in quite heavily and you might break this socket while trying to remove it because it's glued in. I will leave a link in the description as well to where you can buy replacement sockets. Obviously you can choose whichever socket you want but as we've based it on this one I'll, I'll try and find a replacement for that one and, uh, and link that up there. So once you've got your socket out you should then be left with a driver with a dangly socket already soldered to it. Now as you can see I've broken this one. So uh, be very careful, you know, during the process of this, I would like to say no headphones were harmed, but I I broke at least two drivers. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen how these work, but essentially there's a diaphragm with metal traces in it, which forms a magnetic field, which is attracted to the stator magnets that are on the outside, the stealth magnets on these ones. Uh, yeah, so that just moves the diaphragm backs and forwards closer and further away from these magnets. Now then the diaphragm itself is quite thin, so if you poke it with a screwdriver, it will go all the way through, woo! Also these uh, magnets, you know, magnets aren't the strongest of materials. If you press on those, you could crack them. I was experimenting, and yes, you can. I tried it. If you're pushing on the magnets, they will crack. Uh, so, if you at any point get a driver stuck somewhere and you want to get it out, my recommendation was find a screwdriver that's the right size, stick it into one of the screw holes and then kind of lever it out like that. Avoid putting any pressure on the driver uh, or surrounding area. If you're really, really stuck and it's there's no other choice and you've tried that and you've tried giving it a good tapper tapper, just psh, uh, 
then you can press on these bits here where the magnets are glued. Very carefully use something flat to press on them so that if you, if you use a rounded object it's going to slip off and probably break your driver. If you use a flat one you can push it out but I really wouldn't recommend doing it that way. I'd, you're better off tapping it or using a screwdriver in a hole and just, just taking your time and getting it out because the tolerances on your 3D printer may be slightly different from mine. I've tried to leave a little bit of tolerance but you want it quite tight in there. So anyway, right. Uh, again, there'll be a link in the description to where you can download these parts. But what we are going to want to do is initially, once you've got your driver and your socket free, get your socket that way round, that way round. So you've got the, the thinner side. Yeah, it'll only fit in one way round nicely. So it's just the, I don't know if you can see there. So I've poked it through so that the, the socket is there and it's down out of the way of the, the circumference of the thing so that we can get the driver in. Yeah, so once you've got that in, you're going to want to put the driver in and you'll notice that there's lots of indentations and stuff in here that match up with the shape of this. So you want to get it the right way up. My top tip here again is take your screwdriver that's the right size, stick it through one of the screw holes uh, on the driver, on the thing. Get that lined up there so that you can't get it in the wrong way around. And that will kind of guide it, guide it in. I'm just going to push that down into place. As you can hear, it's pretty tight because I want to keep it, you know, from moving around. And uh, yeah, just make sure your screwdriver is nice and straight in there. That will help you maneuver it around. Push it all the way down. Make sure. Again, I'm pressing all the way around the outside on this foam area. Just giving it a really good press. Just make sure it's all in place. Wiggling the screwdriver to make sure that it's lined up and there you go so now you've got a driver in the hole all the screw holes are lined up all this all of these uh, little fins are going to be lined up as well which is what smooths the airflow so once you've got the 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 driver in and all pressed down you're going to want to get these little hinge pieces out so uh so where this driver attached onto the headband there's these little black nubbins that poke through the holes Whoop going to want to remove those and put those through the holes in the side of the ear cup that will attach back onto the headband then so those just go through there now then unfortunately I don't have a spare part with the inner blades this is a three part ear cup uh, I don't have a spare one printed they're, they're in here I can't be bothered to pull it apart you can figure it out I'll bring out the 3d model see this is how it stacks up bloop, bloop, bloop. Um, but one thing of note, uh, when you dismantle the original ones, when you get this, this grill off, it's not too hard, it just clips out, um, but there'll be a piece of there's the metal grill and there's a piece of fabric which is glued to it and you can separate that, uh, those out. And as you can see on mine, I've basically sandwiched that piece of fabric which I've liberated from that in between the blades and these and this outer ring, which will stop any hairs or dust or anything getting into the driver, but doesn't obstruct the airflow. So we've reused another part of this to, to protect the driver. So you can do the same. So you use that, separate out the metal part from the fabric, fabric in there. So we're gonna build up the stack now. So we've got our thing in there, blades, which I haven't got printed, sorry. Uh, <laughs> bad preparation. And then this bit goes on top. Now then, the you'll notice the, the this has got lumps and bumps, and there is it is left and right. You want the the big lumps, the most lumps, at the front of your ear. So opposite the the thingy, have I got have I got one the right way around? Uh, yeah, yeah. So on this one, you can obviously see the sockets at the front. So you want the most lumps at the front, like that. So that will go in there. I've also got another part which I haven't got a spare of here, so you just have to bear with me. And also, if you can't figure this out, to be honest, you shouldn't be doing this. Uh, it's just not it's not that hard. But what I've also done is I've 3D printed another part here, which will hold the metal grill, which was uh, again liberated off here. So remember when we split the metal from the fabric, the metal part goes on the outside, the fabric part goes on the inside. Um, so that if you want this grill on, which I recommend, as I've broken two drivers, but you know. It's totally up to you. You can have it or not. Doesn't matter. But yeah, so then, so we've got our ear cup like this. Grill on, screws in. Uh, now then the screws that I'm using are uh, M3 by, what is it? 
Yeah, so M3 by 25 should be all right. Um, yeah, so screws, screws you're gonna want M3 by 25. I've designed it so you don't need self-tapping screws. You can just use hex bolts or something like that. It will all go together. As you're assembling it, you wanna squeeze down very tightly around, like, so you wanna put in all the screws, squeeze down very tightly so that these will tap into the, into the plastic. I think you can reuse the original screws, but um, it's not how I've designed it to work. So we'll just pop that in there. So what I'm doing is I'm squeezing tightly on there while putting it in, which just ensures that as you put the screw in, it doesn't push the sandwich apart. Uh, I'll, I'll stick some links to where you can get some, um, but obviously it's, it's a pretty standard thing, just eBay, Amazon it. And you'll want four or five per ear cup, so get 10, a pack of 10, just in case. Um, I've got five holes on the ear cup, I'm only using four of them, but you know, again, it's down to personal taste if you want an extra one. So then you will have the whole thing sandwiched together, and when it's um, when it's built properly, you will end up with a with a ridge around the outside, which will take a standard pad of around sort of 90, 100 mil. We'll go on there. So the bare dynamic pads and anything that will fit a bare dynamic will fit these. There's also lots of other 100 mil pads. Are they? Sorry, is it 100 or 90? I can never remember. It is. Yeah, so it's just under 100, yeah, so 100 mil pads. Uh, I went on AliExpress, I searched for angled 100 mil pads. I found some of these leather ones with an angle. Uh, pad rolling is, is a personal thing. Like these leather ones, they give you a bit more bass, but they uh, lose a little bit of sound stage. Uh, if you go for something like a velour, like a DT990 pad, a bit less bass, a bit wider sound stage. Down to your personal listening tastes. I, I like both. I like both. I like swapping between them. <laughs> um, but yeah, try a few different pads. You can actually reuse the original pads, but it's not really really an ideal situation. So what, what you've got to do is, uh, if you take your original pad, and then what I've done is I've just used some scissors to cut, cut out this inner ring. So I've cut it out so it's around 100 millimeters. And then, uh, and then that will fit over. But it's, it's not easy to fit. It's not an ideal fit. But you know, you could do it in a pinch. So you could reuse the same ear pads. Right. So that's the exciting part. That's the ear cups done. Obviously, uh, the way this is designed, the driver will actually hold the socket in place. But you can screw on the little screwy bit if you've managed to save that, which will neaten it up. I've left enough space in there if you just screw that on. But yeah, so that's that. That's the driver stack built up. You'll have the hinge pieces either side ready to put the headband on. You should have a bit of fabric in there to stop you from poking it. And a, possibly a grill over the back there. All the parts are downloadable. Let's have a look at the headband. So this is an original Hi-Fi Man headband. And if you haven't been following along, essentially I like these aluminium pieces. I think they look pretty sexy. The headband is okay. Nothing that wrong with it, but these plasticky parts I did not like. <laughs> um, so, uh, so I've redesigned uh, designed a couple of different versions, but uh, let me see if I can get the other one. Yeah, so I initially went with this, which looks quite good in black as an industrial thing, but if you're going with a slightly lighter colour, I've made a slightly daintier version, uh, which I think is, is slightly nicer. They're, they're both similar, they both fit. I've designed both of them, so I'll stick them both on there and you can choose which one you like. But essentially, uh, let's get this let's get this badger apart. So obviously, once you've got your ear cups off, you're going to end up with a headband, uh, and you can reuse the headband as it is. There's no need to modify it. But while we're in there, we might as well. So let us commence. So these shoulders, they've got a clip either side, which you're going to want to jam something in there and just kind of release. It's so just kind of get this in underneath, lever it a bit, it's going to go pop. Uh, you could probably could just pull it. Um, but yeah, it's easier if you get, get something down there. There we go. So that's popped off. And underneath, I was quite impressed with how the headband's made. It's just a shame that it's ugly. It's, it's put together very well. So if we're going full, full jobby jobs on this, um, this outer skin is held onto the end here with double-sided tape and we're just going to want to peel that away carefully because we're going to want to reuse as much of this as we can. Um, if, you were, if you're handy with a needle and thread you could obviously recover this with a real leather or something like that which would make it sexier. I might do that to mine. Um, they're not finished yet but 
this is this is as far as I'm going to go for now. I'm very busy on uh, until January. I'm pretty booked up with with jobs. We're building a new balanced amplifier. I've got I've got someone that's ordered a hundred pairs of gaming headphones for some kind of event. That's going to take me a while to make. Um, yeah, very busy. So anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah. So carefully peeling this back, and what we want to do is get it, just roll it all the way back till we get past the halfway point. Because we're gonna do, we might as well do a good job while we're in here, and we're gonna take a take a bit. We're gonna modify the padding slightly. And if you thought that looked hard, wait till we try and get it back on. There is no need to do this, this, this whole headband thing. It's just cosmetic and comfort. Um, cosmetic, you can just change the arms. It's not a problem. Comfort, what we're going to do is we're going to take a small bit of the padding out from the middle so it doesn't press on the center of your head, which will make it com more comfortable for longer listening periods. So what you want to kind of do is figure out, like hold it like that, figure out where the centre is, because I did it wrong on my pair and I got it off to one side. Um, so centre, I'm going to say centre's there. Uh -huh. No, that's how I did it. Push the arms all the way in. <laughs> then you can judge where the centre is. Uh, centre. Okay, we're going to put a little cut in there. So I know where it is. And then what we're going to want to do is just cut a wedge out of there. So a sharp knife. I'm using a scalpel here. So either side of the centre, roughly equidistant. We're going to cut in there. Cut that section out. Okay, so as you can see, there's two layers of padding here. We've just cut, we're going to leave that one, which is attached onto the headband itself, and we're going to take this this section out here. Now we've got to manoeuvre the, 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 the cover back on. Actually, before we do that, we'll, while it's off, right, pull the arm out, pull this out, pull this padding back slightly, and underneath it will reveal a Phillips, like a Phillips screw on the end of this arm, so you have to pull it all the way down to reveal the screw. Um, it's a nice big chunky screw again. Well done, Hi-Fi man. This is good. This is well made. This is just surprisingly well made uh, for a hundred and fifty pound pair of headphones. That is, that sounds good as well. This is, you know, this, this is this is a nice little bit of treasure that I found. These HE four hundred SEs. Right, boom. That's out. That's off. Then you can take your new one, stick it through your arm, stick your arm through there. And then basically a reverse of what you just did. Find the screw hole, put the screw in it, screw it up. Yeah, one thing to look out for with this, uh, where the click is, the, the, the plastic bit will be slightly in the way of the screw. So you'll have to kind of just, just make sure that, make sure you've got clearance around the screw, otherwise it won't go in properly. Right, the long and boring part of putting this back on, you know, it'll take 10 minutes, but it's kind of worth it in the long run. Right, cool, 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 cool. Got that just about manoeuvred back into shape. Let's try and get it as straight as you can. And what you'll notice on the end of these, there's little cutouts that go over the clips that the plastic bits clip onto. So you want to keep going until you can get those down to where the where the clips are and push those over the clips and then reattach them to that double-sided tape that's there. So, it's, you know, it's not too bad. Just stick that down to the tape. What I've done on both of these is I've left a little window here on the on there which shows the metal underneath. So if you want to do a nicer job, just kind of neaten up that um, double-sided tape. Like I'd take a bit off the metal bit there so when the hinge is back on, you can see through it nicely and obviously clean that up if you if you want to. Then slide this up and it should click into place. Click, click. 
All right, so that, there we go. So that is a slightly nicer shoulder, which will match our ear cups. You've got to cut out the middle there, so when that's on your head, it presses either side and doesn't press on the center. Bit of design there on the cheap. Uh, yeah, all we've done is remove a little bit of foam. And then you can, uh, you know, just strip it It's all, all together. Obviously, if you're going for something fancy like I've gone for here, you're going to want to paint your parts first before you assemble it. Um, I've also made a slightly nicer cable. If you'd like to see how I made the cable, we can do a cable video. But again, it's one of those things where if you're doing this kind of job, you probably probably can figure out how to make your own cable. Um, or you can you can buy one from customcans.co.uk. Yeah, fabulous shops I've heard. Uh, they, they make great cables. A totally unbiased opinion. That, oh, look, look at what I did there. Can you see where I put my notch in, in totally the wrong place because I forgot to extend the arms. So. I am an experienced professional and I got it wrong. I broke some drivers. So this is not without its dangers. <laughs> I am also reckless and stupid and don't, you know, that's, that, that's why it's broken. I never take my time. I just rush into stuff and do it and then figure out what I've done wrong later. So if you're a slightly more conscientious person, you shouldn't have those issues. But hopefully I've made all the mistakes so that you don't have to. Well, that was the that was the build bit. You know, that's it's important to uh, find the files and, and stuff in the links above. Uh, getting the pads on. Let's just do that. It's pretty easy. So you'll be left with a groove around the outside. You want to hook the flappy bit on the back, you, you want to make sure you get these pads with the with the lip on the back, which is how most pads go on. You want to get that in the groove, just kind of hook it on all the way around. He says, failing badly. So these pads have been taken off and put back on like a hundred times and they're a bit floppy. All right. There we go, nearly there. And obviously you want the thin bit, you know, if you've got angled pads, you want the, the thinner bit at the front. That'll angle them towards your ears. And then boom. Adjust. I have discovered that these are very sensitive to how you place them on your ears, so make sure they are set up right. And uh, you might want to move them around a bit to get the best sound. Certainly when we were taking measurements, if they weren't on the rig properly, you got some really weird measurements. But anyway, speaking of measurements, let's take a look at those, shall we? Let's get those badges up on the screen. Uh... Okay, so these are two measurements that were taken with the amplifier at the same volume. So as you can see, overall, we've kind of gained a couple of decibels, you know, from, from around 2K down. Um, it doesn't roll off quite as quickly when you get down to the very low frequencies. Yeah, so in, in the mid in the mid range, they're quite close together. You get a little bit more in the low end. You get a little bit more around 1K. We've got a little bit more. It goes down below the original about 4K. Uh, and then you've got a slightly flatter kind of very high end. As I was saying, let's just have a quick look at the distortion as well. So as you can see, the, 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 the actual frequency plot on there looks pretty similar to the original. But when you listen to them, it's just, it just sounds so much fuller and uh, better. I suppose some of that will be sound staging because we've um, messed with it a little bit. Um, but yeah, trust me, do this, have a listen, go, ooh. It's better. <laughs> the, the original ones are good. These ones are just be like I'm. Pretty, this is it. These are mine. Normally, I don't keep the headphones that I modify. I'll, I'll sell them or something. I'm keeping these ones. I really like them. They're really good. Possibly my favourite headphones at the moment. I don't have very many expensive headphones. Um, you know, most of my headphones are around sort of two to four hundred pounds. I think these are my favourite ones. <laughs> in those, but overall kind of long listening periods, just the kind of thing that you can live with. Uh, uh, they're, they're very good, they're very good for the money. Okay, um, what, what we'll do is we'll just have a quick look at the, the distortion on there as well. So stock HE400 SE, um, this will be a little bit down to our rig, you know, it's not perfect, but it's okay for comparing A with B. So you'll see right down in the very low frequencies around 20 Hertz, you've got quite a big lump in the old uh, total harmonic distortion. 
and looking at it, we, I was looking into it, and it's basically in the, uh, the the second harmonic. You've got a big old harmonic there, and then if we have a look at our, and, and you've also got a huge peak <laughs> around sort of four and a half k down there, which is partially to do with the driver. But let's uh, let's have a look at the other one. The distortion in the lower end, in the bass, which is the thing that I had the problem with, is pretty much gone. It's flattened flattened out nicely in the sub-bass region. Uh, and the actual peak around 4.5k is reduced if we just have a look between the two. Boom. But, um, yeah, I don't know whether that's it. I'm, I don't know enough about this kind of thing. I'm more of a hands-on, have a listen, have a tweak, have a listen, have a tweak kind of guy until it gets right and this is I've tweaked it until it sounds right to me my taste may vary from yours um, but it's a pretty cheap jobby I've, I've let a lot I've let a few other people listen to it all of them have agreed that they like <laughs> the sound of these more I'm not saying it's better they just like it more um, yeah yeah so so yeah so it's been a it's been a long old journey to go from this to this uh, a lot of design work. I learned a lot. My CAD skills have probably improved because there was some, certainly some, yeah, I, I had to do uh, flow simulations, all kinds of stuff to try and get the airflow right on these. So, yeah, so a pair of these, 150 to 180 pounds. Set of pads, probably 20 or 30 pounds, depending on what pads you get. And then 3D printed parts. If you've got a 3D printer uh, and you print them yourself and you reuse the original cable, you should be able to make those for less than 200 pounds. I'm happy to say that uh, you're gonna struggle to find a better pair of headphones for under 200 pounds. I'm running them balanced off our fancy new balanced amplifier, which is something that we are working on, which I will do a video on soon, but it's not quite ready to unveil. But uh, the plan with these, with the amplifier, is we're gonna do a fully balanced amplifier with four pin XLR and two three pin XLR. Uh, it'll be moddable because it's custom cans, you love the mods. Um, you, it will have socketed op amps, so you'll be able to do op amp rolling, you know, you see we have to buy the basic one, and in the future if you're feeling a bit flush, you buy some fancy op amps, you can improve the amplifier. It's not going to be, you know, a legendary amplifier, it's going to be a reasonably priced amplifier. Uh, we are aiming for just over £100 for a fully balanced amplifier, which is going to be one of the cheapest ones on the market, and it's not too bad. It's it's very good, you know. I'm 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 happy with it. The uh, it's going to be just over 100 pounds with basic op amps in there. We might do a version with fancy op amps, which will cost a bit more and sound better. But the idea uh, with a lot of these things, I'm trying to get something that is reasonable that you can then upgrade in the future if you want. So it's got all the connections that you're going to need. It's got all the facilities you need. It's got plenty of power to drive just about anything. And then you know, if you want to spend another 50 quid on it it'll sound better if you're very fussy about that thing but it's half the fun is the journey trying all kinds of different op amps swapping them out see what they sound like i've tried three or four different ones uh yeah so that's that's <laughs> sorry jabbering on about that so that's another project that we've got coming up and i'll go through that at some point once we've got it finished there's a few little tweaks to the design that we want to do it's going to be sexier this is only a it's only a prototype yeah, so if you've got any questions, stick them in the thing. I'd be really fascinated to, you know, if some of you build it, I'd love to see, you know, video it. Tell me what's wrong, if you find anything wrong, because obviously I'm very close to the subject. I've designed it. I understand how it all goes to, together. You might find that it's uh, there's problems. And uh, I'm, I'm happy to do a few little tweaks and redesigns and stuff, but I'm pretty, I'm pretty certain that... You know, someone who's relatively skilled with a screwdriver could build these. It's not it's not really a problem. So yeah, so let me know. Let me know what you think. Um, like and subscribe because we've got some more interesting projects coming up. Uh, I can't go through them all, but we've got we're going to do some resto mods. We're going to take some very old headphones. We're going to spruce them up, turn them into sexy headphones. Uh, yeah, so anyway, it's been really nice hanging out. Thanks for bearing with me. I know it's been about six months, but uh, it's been a crazy six months. We've uh, we've sold a lot of stuff. I've had to make a lot of things. People keep throwing money at me. I keep having to make stuff. You know how it is. You know how it is. I haven't got time for these fun projects. <laughs> Hopefully after Christmas, I'll have time for some more projects. But, you know, I'm going to be going into hibernation for a bit.